Wow. Sometimes I really do pull out the magic. There's rum, there's a whole load of tropical flavours, there's lemon juices, there's bitters, there's a luxuriousness of it being a sour. It's a fantastic cocktail that I'm going to show you how to make right now. But do keep watching because I'm going to give it the full rum dissection. We're trying out 13 different rums in this cocktail. And then stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to show you a bonus little riff of how you can take this cocktail to the next level. Now let me show you how I've made the cocktail. Uh, first up is the rum, and I'm gonna talk about why I've picked this rum in a second. All be revealed, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Uh, we're going for 60 mil, US double bubble of the Plantation XO rum. Uh, next up, as this is sour, we are going for lemon juice. And I'm gonna sort of stick to the standard sort of two, one, half-ish kind of thing for a sour. Uh, so 30 mil of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice in there. Let's pop that down there. Next up, we go for our, traditionally it would be sugar syrup, but this is a tropical sour. Uh, I've got fashionola syrup. Now, to understand what that is, you're gonna have to go over to my other channel, and I'm not sure when it's gonna post it, but it'll post it cut around the time that this goes live, maybe the day after. But gonna show you exactly what this fashionola syrup is and how I have made it. So that's on my other channel, Steve the Barman Extra. Uh, now I'm going for, I'm actually gonna go slightly more. Normally I'll do 15 mil of sugar syrup, but this is a little bit tartar because of the fruit that's involved. So I'm going for 22 and a half mil of uh, fashionola in here. And there's a couple more interesting ingredients coming up here. First up, let's do the bitters. These are my preferred bitters over Angostura. I do like Angostura, don't get me wrong, but I absolutely adore these as well. Miss Betters, aromatic bitters. Going for one, two, oh, that's a cool, that's a full bottle. There we go, two of those. Now, obviously we need, as this is sour, we need kind of uh, like an egg white tradition in this cocktail. Now, long-term fans will know that I don't use egg whites. You will have traditionally seen this on this channel or um, Velvet Miraculous Foamers on the Drink Stuff channel. However, what I'm gonna do for my membership community, I'm gonna drop a video I did for Drink Stuff, um, private video, what I did for Drink Stuff on the membership um, channel to explain what this is, because I really do like these, and you will see a comparison that I've done uh, with these alongside egg white and stuff like that. So that's coming up on the uh, on the membership channel, so stay tuned for that. I'll post that at the same time as this. But this, um, UK people could go away and Google. It's essentially aquafaba that you can get in supermarkets now in the UK. I'm just going for 15 mil of aquafaba, all right, in here. And that will give us the texture and the consistency and make this cocktail look amazing, all right? So, uh, power shake, loads of ice, good hard, fast power shake. And then to serve up, I know it's not a Mai Tai, but I absolutely I love the Mai Tai glasses. I would love to get some more Mai Someone in the UK needs to start importing Mai Tai glasses because there's none available. And because it's a sour, I do love to double strain it to get that sort of lovely velvety smooth consistency. There we go. And then just the garnish, uh, I've got a couple of pineapple fronds here. And my straw, obviously. Be garnished with a sprig of mint or orange or lemon or whatever you fancy. But it's just tropical, we've got pineapple fronds. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little story of why I picked Plantation XO for this cocktail. When it comes to actually making content for YouTube, a lot of it is actually us playing to the algorithm. But what a lot of people miss and creators miss is the algorithm is actually you guys at home. Your own viewing habits dictate what video YouTube puts in front of you. You see, YouTube has a whole ton of data points to help us creators make content that you want to watch, which means YouTube is actually pretty good at giving us topics that us creators should consider to help us grow our channels. Now, in reality, a lot of those topics that get suggested have absolutely no relevance to the content we already make. For example, if you look at the screen grab on screen right now, it shows a lot of whiskey videos, a lot of cigars, and a bit of beer. That's the content that YouTube thinks I should be making. But I'm a rum channel and I know diddly squat about beer, cigars, and whiskey. Except for the fact that Jack Daniels is obviously the best whiskey. Of course it is. But every once in a while, YouTube throws a title suggestion out there that kind of makes you like, ooh, that's interesting. Hence, this video and the title of this video. The title that actually got suggested that I should make was how to make a tropical rum sour using Plantation XO. Now, from what I can see, a tropical rum sour, it doesn't feature in uh, the Smoker's Cove. It doesn't feature in Beach Bum Berry's books. As far as I can tell, it certainly ain't a Trader Vicks or a, a Don Beachcomber recipe. So basically what YouTube has done 
is taking all those data points that viewers of my channel watch from other videos, come up with a title and said, Barman, make that video. Now, there's obviously a few things here and no, this isn't a YouTube lesson. Firstly, what the hell is a tropical rum sour? So that whole recipe is open to interpretation anyway. And secondly, why the hell should I be using Plantation XO without actually realizing has YouTube become the ultimate rum pairing guide? Well, let's find out. As tradition now, uh, I've, got, I've actually got 14. Again, my eyes are too big for my belly. I did have 13. I was pouring them out and I thought, hang on, I'm missing a light, a light column still. So Flor de Cania is the extra addition. I, I've, I know this doesn't really fit on camera, but we'll get there. Uh, so I've got 14 rums to compare here in this tropical rum sour. Do any of these 14, are they better than Plantation XO? Does, does YouTube know better than the likes of Smuggler's Cove? Martin K, let's find out out. But also, don't forget, on my second channel, Steve the Barman Extra, not only am I going to be doing more videos, so we're going to be deep diving uh, against the eight of the other plantation rums uh, I've got behind me there, the bartender and the signature range. We're going to be doing this exact same test over on that channel, but I'm also getting the spiced and flavoured rums out to play as well. Now, before I get into the rums, don't be fooled, I haven't mentioned this, don't be fooled into thinking this is a sweet cocktail. It's really not sweet. It is well balanced, but it is well balanced on the sour side. A sour should be sour-ish, but not overly sour. You do want that nice bit of sweetness to bring it all round. You don't want it overly lemon juicy fried, right? Overly citrus. So this is a perfectly, for me, balanced cocktail. Uh, it should be more sour than what a daiquiri is. Let's put it like that. So let's get into these rums then. How I've done this this time. Uh, let's go up. Obviously, the pot still is going to be more Jamaican than anything else, but there's a few rums coming to do this. So I've got Hamden 8 this time and Worthy for a dark, Worthy 109 for a dark. Uh, we've then gone blended, lightly aged blended. So I've got Diplo Planas and Chairman's uh, Reserve White in there. We've gone blended aged. Uh, so I've got the Appleton 8, the Eldorado 8, the Dordies 5, and the Mount Gay Black Barrel. Uh, I've got two Soleras there, but different Soleras. So we've got a blended Solera, blended pot and column with the Santa Teresa, and a blended column uh, with uh, the Hechicera. Uh, and then we come on to the columns. So I've got Flor de Carnia as the white column. Uh, I've got Ron Cube as the aged kind of column, still Cuba. And we've got a Buelo uh, column, uh, Panama, a Buelo seven-year-old. And then tucked down the end, I, I might just do widescreen so you can see it. I've gone Se Clement Select Barrel. Uh, not, it's sort of an aged uh, agricole, but not too aged. So I just want to see how they go. Now I have to use this one as the benchmark, the Plantation XO. That, I have to say, that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. I would give that cocktail a strong, strong 8 out of 10. It could be better. And I've got the riffs coming up at the end of the video, don't forget. But that is delicious. Can any of these beat that? Does YouTube know best? So first round eliminations, I've got three because they are dramatically worse than everything else I've got here. And by no coincidence, they're the ones on the outside. First off, Hamden. Let's get rid of Hamden 8. That is terrible. I, I like the rum. Uh, I very much dislike that cocktail. That's shocking. Uh, next up, Worthy Park. Far too rich, far too heavy. Um, just doesn't work for me in a sour at all. So that can go, and I'll probably put that back in the wrong place. And then the third one, and I really do, I've, I've quite fallen in love with that. That's a really nice whiskey. Uh, we, we, yeah, it's a really nice rum. Just doesn't work in this at all. Now, next round eliminations. This is going to follow a theme as well. Do you know what? These are nice, but they are not a patch on that. Not even remotely close. And it's the three white rums. Um, the best out of the three is the Diplo Planus. First off, the Flor de Cania 4. There's absolutely nothing to this cocktail. It's it, it just needs more oomph. Really nice daiquiri rum, cracking mojito rum. Not for this cocktail at all in the slightest. Um, the Chairman's Reserve, again, it's got the alcohol kick, but it just hasn't got the character in the rum to make it, to give, blend those sort of tropical notes together in a sour. Uh, so that's going. The Planus, as I said, it's the best out of the three. It has got a little bit more to it, but it is nowhere near as good as what these are. The next round, I'm going to get, it's another three easy ones here, because again, not only are these three not a patch on the others left, they're not a patch on that. And this is really fascinating. So, gone is the Appleton 8. Um, if I'm giving that a strong 8 out of 10, that's 6 at best. 
Um, it, yeah, it, I, I'm just not loving it. And same with the Eldorado, eight-year-old. Again, um, it's just... I, I don't think to use Jamaican rums in sours or, or those kind of cocktails. Again, daiquiris, they're not... Jamaican rums are not my first thought for daiquiris. So for those of you who do love Jamaican rum in your daiquiris, it might be suited to you. But for me, in this cocktail, if I'm using that as the base, benchmark and that is delicious, not suited to that. The third one, I'm a little bit sad about. Kube. Uh, Kube has gone. It's better than everything that I've got rid of before, but it's not as good as these five. Right, without keeping you on tenterhooks any longer, do any of these five match up to that? If that is the benchmark, that is delicious. Um, three of them do. Uh, there would be two more eliminations here. Dolly's um, the five-year-old, I, I would go. And actually, the Hechicera would go as well. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave them there because they are nice in their own rights. The winner, the standout winner for me, is the, the Mount Gay Black Barrel. That is delicious. And that would be hard pushed um, to say that that was worse or better than that. That is delicious. But interestingly, because there's a little bit of extra sweetness in these, and I'm not saying they're sweetened rum, so I can't think off the top of my head whether they are, but the Abuelo, I'm pretty sure is, but don't hold me to that. Um, there's a little bit of extra sweetness in these rums, but a nice sweetness compared to some of the stuff I've got rid of that actually does add a little bit extra to the cocktail. So I would say that you are, if you've got Santa Teresa 1796 or Abuelo 7, you are absolutely going to love those sour cocktails. But for me, the pick of the five left has to be the Mount Gay, has to be. Now it would be, in my head, it would be kind of unfair to say the Plantation XO is better than the Mount Gay, bearing in mind, you know, served over ice, that's served over ice as well, but bigger volumes. They should, in theory, because of the way I've done it, they should, in theory, be exactly the same ratios in taste or be remotely, sim be similar in taste, if you like, because of how I've set this up. If that is the case, then, the Plantation XO takes it for me. It is delicious. But, you know, there is a chance that if you made that exactly the same way as I made that, there is a fair chance that that Mount Gay Black Barrel would be on par with that. And do you know what? In the interest of science, I had to do it. And if you think I'm cheating, there's all my samples, you know, so that's, I haven't just poured the samples into that. I have actually made a fresh one. Can I do a true comparison? That's been made, in all honesty, that's been made a good half an hour now, the time to take to shot this video. And that's obviously that's obviously a little bit diluted now for the ice. The ice is still pretty solid, but there's a bit of extra water gone in there compared to this. Just tasting and from memory, I would say the Plantation XO is better because all right, we know there's a little touch of that extra sugar added to that, so it's a little bit sweeter than Mount Gay. That is delicious. I do like that, but that to that, I probably would go the Plantation XO. Now, if you are thinking about making this cocktail, the bonus riff I would do is with the bitters. Uh, the aromatic, the Angostura bitters do obviously work fantastically well in here, but there is a way you can take this to the next level by using some different flavored bitters. Now, uh, a lot of you would automatically assume that uh, the pineapple and star anise, I think the pineapple and star anise will get lost in this type of cocktail because what you're essentially doing, there is because of the fashionola, you've got passion fruit and I'll give you two of them. You've got passion, uh, passion, passionola, I like that. You've got passion fruit and uh, pineapple in the in the base mix of the fashionola. But don't forget, you see the full recipe on there. So you're not gonna get the full benefit of those bitters from me personally. What I would do is one of these three. I think these three uh, in that is a fantastic riff. So we've got the banana and bergamot bitters. So all you're going to do is substitute the two dashes of aromatic bitters for something like this. Banana and bergamot will give you a different flip. There's no banana in that blend, if that fashionola, obviously. Uh, so the banana playing about with those tropical flavours would be fantastic. But to take it on a more tiki vibe, and we've had this chat uh, a little bit in the community, in the, little, in the membership area uh, recently, the whole... Uh, what's it called the pimento dram, the allspice dram, whichever one you want to call it. I don't use pimento or allspice dram because I have got these tiki bitters and they do work a treat. So you've got cinnamon, allspice, cloves. You could add to that to give that sort of that tiki-esque vibe, those spice layers in that cocktail. That again is going to be fantastic. But the one that you may not kind of think of is the burlesque bitters as well. It kind of gives you, so it's acai, uh, pepper, and hibiscus. For me, that is the hibiscus that comes through more than anything else. It's mainly because I know what hibiscus is. I wouldn't say I'm really au fait 
with acai on its own. Uh, so it's the hibiscus for me that really does shine through that. And I think that hibiscus, bearing in mind there is a little bit of hibiscus in the fashionola, I think that with the pepper and that is just going to complement. If you've got any other bonus riffs, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see me dissect another cocktail, then dive into that video right there.